Yo, 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 what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? It's your hostess with the mostest. It's PKR, Pastor Keenan Riley, and we are here back live on People Suck, Love Them Anyways, episode 222,962. Feels like it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Feels like yes, it. Yes, sir. I would like to have taken a, a beginning picture, like the first time we ever we done probably this. probably have one, do we? Uh, I don't know. I'll I don't think so. Home. Yeah, I'd have to go back and uh, Just look man. for the first picture of us together without a mic. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, hey, yeah. there we go. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So we could probably go back and do that. But I'd like to see how much we've changed. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Has it been two, two, three years? I think it's a little bit over two. I don't think it's been three yet. I don't think it's been three, man. That's kind of crazy uh, to think about. But yeah, I would have liked to take a picture, man. I think it would have been kind of cool to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, okay. especially especially well, when we get like an actual room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no they can compare yeah. It like, just being on the stage here at yeah. church. But yeah, we, yeah. we did have an actual room, though. We were in the break room in my workplace. Oh, yeah, I know. So that was a room. Yeah, it was it was a room. It was a room. We were I mean, we were still a room. We, we were rudely <laughs> we were rudely interrupted at times by yeah. people, uh, but it's fine. And uh, and now we still are sometimes yeah. at church. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people yeah, people still come in and, and and hang out with us or whatever. It's all good. Yeah. So maybe one day, now I ain't gonna say maybe. One day, one day. <laughs> let, yeah. Let me let me get preaching. One day, uh, we're gonna have a room, man. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be nice. It's gonna be a people suck love them anyways room, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we can just maybe we can start doing daily, man. Daily daily podcast, podcast yeah, dear bro. Lord. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's way down the road. Whenever, yeah. whenever we're we're getting paid uh, for what we do. I was going to say we're full time <laughs> employees, man. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in and for being a part of this. And uh, and today, um, we have a very special guest with us. He listens to every episode. He says, and if he uh, if he didn't say that, then you know what? We weren't going to let him on. So that's number one. Uh, part of the contract. Yes, yeah, part of the contract, man. Uh, but number two, uh, but we are thankful. Um, to have him here with us, he drove about three hours. You said three and a half. Three and a half. He's like, hey, I'm gonna put that extra thirty <laughs> yeah. on there, bro. All right. Extra thirty shows extra, how saved I am. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, so he drove. I'm about hungry for Jesus. Three and a half hours, man, to be in church service with us today. So, so that is amazing in itself. But uh, welcome to Mr. David Travis. David, how you doing, buddy? Bless. Oh, hey, hey, there, 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 there we go. Yes, sir. Yeah, we used to have a hand clap thing, but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. How you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm uh, making it. That's good, man. That's good. So, how was the drive up from uh, what 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 city in Tennessee do you live in? McKenzie, Tennessee. McKenzie. Hey, that's his wife's name, yeah. man. It's got to be a horrible place. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, no, nah, no, nah. nah. too bad. It's that's what pretty, we say about her too. Yeah, too bad. <laughs> it's you know, not too bad. bad. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Well, how big is it? How many people are in, uh, in McKenzie, Tennessee? I think it's uh, with college kids. I think it's like thirty five hundred population. College kids. Y'all got a college? Yeah, Bethel University. Bethel. You Oh, Bethel University. <laughs> I don't know. We we uh, talk we about Bethel. Yeah, off, right? yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know about Bethel, bro. Yeah, yeah they, they they be doing some crazy stuff out yeah. there uh, in Cali. I don't know about what's happening over in uh, over McKenzie, in McKenzie, Tennessee, Tennessee man. But uh, yeah, so uh, but no, nah, man. Very honored uh, for you to be with us. Uh, for you to be sitting here with us. Uh, he uh, he actually showed up this morning unannounced, and uh, and I was like, hey, man, why don't you just stay and do the podcast with us afterwards? Uh, David's always a, a big fan of it. He shares it uh, every week. Says, hey, go listen to my brothers and. I'm like um, the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> I look dead in the camera. Very, very uh, judgmental spirit uh, over here to my right today. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so we're very thankful. And, uh, and yeah, so we said, hey, why not come on and, uh, and talk some Jesus, talk some life, talk some nonsense or whatever else we might throw at you today. Uh, he kind of seen the uh, the, pro the the product of what happens uh, beforehand. Uh, so we had podcast yeah, before the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So he kind of got in on that conversation a little bit. Uh, he prayed for us both. Uh, he found out <laughs> that we were avid uh, R and B and rap and thing listeners, and so he prayed for us both. Yeah, Keenan uh, and I. It's like Keenan's like I like Lil Wayne better. I like Eminem better. And David's <laughs> over here like I listen to worship music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. So he said he was going to pray for us. Yeah. He said the worst he's ever listened to is Garth Brooks. So uh, <laughs> so yeah. So we're definitely. We're definitely in the in the hole today, man. We need some help uh, mm -hmm. for sure. We're down about three points. Uh, David's up one. So yeah, <laughs> we'll absolutely. see. We'll see how well we go. He is definitely going to get into heaven before we do. Uh, so He'll have a bigger mansion. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, you have to invite us over. Uh, yeah, I'll think about it. Uh, yeah, he's like, I don't want to get kicked out because you yeah, guys are out. He's like, I don't know if I want to be guilty by association over right, here. Right. I don't want to be with the guys in heaven that lives in the shack. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't want to be with that guy. So God, I get it. God was a woman in that movie. Oh, <laughs> man. Like, we can't the talk shack. about that. Oh, shack. Yeah, we my about that. gosh. Here we go, man. Yeah. You're going to get people stirred up she before was, we even get was, started. He was a black woman, too. So, yeah, yeah it was all kinds of. 
uh, it's all kinds of craziness going yeah, on. All man. kinds of interest. All kinds of craziness for sure. So, uh, but we hope it's been a good week, a productive week. And uh, man, like we talked about today, I guarantee you it was a hard week uh, in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen. Uh, yeah, and uh, and that's it's crazy uh, because today we talked a lot about just Christians being real, uh, being real, being relatable. Uh, and, and, and coming into this this church house, or coming into any church house for that matter. Um, and, and before we get started, Dave, give your church a shout out, man. Where, where you go to church at? Uh, Love and Truth, Jackson, Tennessee. Love and Truth in Jackson, Tennessee. Who's the pastor? Uh, well, we have two. We have Pastor Eddie and Pastor Chris. Oh, well, then, so so Love and Truth is so big, we got like seven pastors, and <laughs> Pastor Chris and Pastor Eddie and Pastor, you know, like so on and so forth. Well, I'm sorry, David, okay? We got, we got Kenan, and then we got Nick, and... You know, a couple other people, couple other talk, people, you know. and yeah, and then that's what we do. Okay, yeah. you know, but go ahead. Um, we actually have, I, we have, I think, four churches in Tennessee, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then we have. Uh, so we get a mega church state. perspective today. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> mega church perspective. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but they're nice people, though. They're they're nice people. <laughs> they're nice people. <laughs> they're nice people. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, so welcome to spirit the, of envy over here in yeah. Kansas. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, over here. Welcome to the slums, yeah, uh, the slums. Of, uh, Hodgeville, of, of of fruition church, uh, where the plaster falls off the walls <laughs> and uh, yeah things like that. So. Uh, yeah, the carpet's kind of stained, you know, so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, so, okay. Well, shout out to Love and Truth Church in Jackson, Tennessee, one of your 17 locations. And uh, uh, your buddy, your buddy David's praying for you. And we're going to pray for you, too, for sure. It sounds like we don't need to pray as much for you because you're doing great. <laughs> yeah, why don't you all uh, pray for us? Yeah. <laughs> if you would like to yeah. partner. Uh, yeah. At fruition-church-one yeah. on Venmo. Uh, we <laughs> Oh man, so but yeah, but no, we talked a lot today about just people being real and relatable. Um, people people don't go to the doctor because they're well; they go to the doctor because they're sick, um, because they need help, and uh, and that's that's the reason why we want people to come into church for. And um, it, it seems like people have it completely backwards. It's like we will we will bring our good to church, or, or, or our our uh, shield of good, I guess I should say, or our mask of good. And uh, we bring that to church, and then it's like, but we will deal with, we'll struggle with, we'll battle with everything else in the world while we're out in the world. And and we flip it. We take it, and it's backwards. And it's like, man, we need to be coming in this place um, and being real, being relatable, being being very uh, vulnerable. We've talked about the word vulnerable a lot, but just, uh, you know, we, we all struggle, man, with something. And um, I, I feel like it's one of the enemy's biggest tactics uh, is to keep us in shame. You know, just the word shame in general, because, you know, we want to shame people for or the devil wants to shame people or make you feel ashamed of of whatever sin you're in. You know, whatever, whatever you're addicted to, whatever you're broken by, the devil wants to make you feel ashamed of that. So, you know, if if you say like, you know, if it's adultery, if you cheated on your spouse, um, you know, the enemy wants you to keep that hidden within your life. So for so long that it literally eats you up from the inside out. And, and he wants you to be ashamed of it because he doesn't want you to voice it. Because if you voice it, then you can move past it. And he doesn't want you to do that. And and so for us, like, I feel like we come in, we sit down, we're in these pews, and everybody, like, everybody looks good, everybody's put together, everybody, like, you know, I, I, I don't see that, that, um, that, that fight or that struggle on most people's face whenever they come in. You know, it's, it's more or less like, uh, like what we've said about the, the altar call, like at the end, like then you kind of see the, the spirit moving a little bit. And still, some people then still don't give up at that point. Like they still just choose to go out and battle with it. Um, but I, I do think that, that the more that people become real and relatable inside of these four walls or inside of any four walls of church, man, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to begin to bring in people that, that were like, you know, that thought that we were fake or thought that we were, um, hypocritical or whatever the case is, and and, and they're actually going to see that being a Christian is not being perfect, but it's 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 having hope in the midst of being unperfect, really. You know, mm-hmm. absolutely. You uh, know, and I think that's one of the and we've talked a lot about how that's one of the biggest struggles that Christians have. Uh, we even talked last week on the podcast about you know how people, you know, oftentimes you know as uh, you, the walk in the door, you know, Keenan's uh, message today was called "I'm fine, BS." No, you're not. Uh, yeah, and you know, BS. It's, yeah, BS was in I there. I called a uh, lot of BS today yeah, too. Did. By you the way, said it a lot. I'm sure. I did. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did. It was donut in his mouth. Yep. Uh, but you know, I, I think it's you know we talked again a little bit about this last week on the pod, but we were talking about you know people will come in, you know, we'll walk up to them, and say, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. I'm good. You know, it's a great day. You know, everything's wonderful. Everything's great. 
Um, but then we see those same people up on this altar crying, you know, at altar call. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just that thing. Of, well, obviously you weren't fine. Yeah, <laughs> right. yes, you weren't right. fine. See, uh, you're, you're not okay. Uh, you know, and feels good to say it. Though. It does. It does. It's a little freeing. <laughs> um, but you know, <laughs> it may get a little hot in hell afterwards, but yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think it's just, you know, these, these people, when they walk into the doors, when they, you know, and I mean, we, we talk a lot about how nobody wants you to be honest. Um, you know, like they, when they ask you how you're doing, they expect I'm good. They expect I'm fine. They're when scared you, of yeah, your response scared. almost. Yeah, they're scared of you saying, well, you know, I barely survived this week. I'm struggling. You know, I got, you know, $5 in the bank. Don't know how I'm going to make it to work. Don't know how I'm going to make it home. All this stories up. You know, it's, feel it, bro. Yeah, it, we, we don't want someone to say that, you know, because, you know, it puts us in that semi-awkward position of, you know, okay, now I'm going to have to be a child of God and help this person out. I'm going to have to put in some work. I'm going to have to pray. I'm going to have to give. I'm going to have to serve mm -hmm. this other human being. And that's, you know, uncomfortable for most Christians, especially as we were kind of talking before the pod about, you know, these lukewarm Christians. You know, they, they aren't really truly on fire for God. And, you know, when they're faced with adversity, when they're faced with somebody who needs them, you know, they can sometimes cripple at it, you know, because yeah. they don't really know what to do. They don't really know how to go about it. Um, and so that's why we, we've talked before about how, number one, it's important to be vulnerable when you walk in the doors, but it's also important to to make sure that when someone comes to you and, and, and shows vulnerability, that you are strong enough and secure enough in your relationship with Christ to help that person out, right. you know, and use that information they're giving you, you know, to, you know, to help them and to pray for them rather than to tear them down, you know, to come over here and talk to somebody else about it in a side room or, you know, to, to talk bad about somebody based on what situation they're struggling with. But yeah. it's important for us to, to come at those situations with prayer. How, how long, Dave, have you been in church? Uh, over two years now. Two years. So so we got somebody sitting here in between us that literally, um, you know, I've been in and out of church since I was eight years old, uh, 39 now. So let's just say 30 plus years. Nick, I know, you know, you grew up in church, you know, things like that. So taking it from somebody's perspective that's only been inside of the church realm for a couple of years, um, you know, what, what was, you talk about being real and talk about being relatable, like, um, it, was there people that you gravitated to in the church or gravitated towards in the church because you felt more like that you had a connection with them because of maybe the struggles they had versus, you know, how wonderful they were or how successful they were or something like that? Yeah. Uh, I'd say, like, you know, I try and find it. It's kind of a little bit of a weird thing, but, like, I try and find something that I have in common with somebody. Right. And then so I can, you know, I can have a conversation with them. Yeah. And then take in being like you said like relatable then mm -hmm. like you know and i'm like you know like if i get a feeling of like hey you know like maybe i can tell this person like how i'm kind of feeling right now you know and right. relate to them right yeah yeah the more connection you have i feel like the more vulnerable you can become i i, I think that's, yeah exactly like i mean like you know like I, I don't know you from adam but if i can make you feel like my best friend mm -hmm. then you're going to begin to to take down walls and you're going to begin to talk a little bit and things like that but that also becomes with just that conversation, like what we were talking about, with just that that engagement of other people, um, and you know, it's uh, it, it's something that that we I, I don't know if, if if it's the society that we live in today, if it's the screen time that we have, you know, the phones and the computers and things like that, um, but it's like it's it's really kind of separated us from being able to engage in conversation and hold a conversation. Um, it's crazy and, and especially, well, it's, it's, it's definitely an age thing. Um, uh, I feel like, because if you go out to a restaurant and eat, you're not going to see 50, 60 year old plus people, you know, sitting there with phones in their faces. Um, they may not be talking to each other, but they're definitely, they're definitely not going to be sitting there with they're phones in their faces. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and talking about everybody else probably in general. Um, but it seems like, you know, we talk about my age group on down. Uh, it seems like that that's like the go-to. Like you'll you'll go out to restaurants and you'll look and see, and like these 30, 35, 20, 25 year olds, even younger, are sitting there and their phones are buried in their face, or you know, or yes, Strike either way, or, or yeah, yeah, <laughs> or their face buried in, buried in phone. phone, yeah, there you either go. or, however, whichever way you want to look at it. I mean, it's 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 apples to apples, oranges to oranges, or apples to oranges. However, you want to look at that one. I could go all day, nonetheless. Um, yeah, <laughs> but. But they are like they're sitting there buried and and, you know, you have this time together. You have this moment to where you could create conversation. It, it doesn't matter about what the day, the week, uh, Christmas, whatever. But it's like you have this moment to have this conversation and people can't do it. 
people can't people will text each other across the table from each other you know and it's like it's easier and that person at table six over there yeah yeah exactly like yeah or like what do you think about the waitress or like you know whatever the case is how much should i tip yeah (laughs) i mean it's like you, you start getting into situations like that where we are so like we, we're so out of touch uh, and connect and, and unconnected with each other. Disconnected, that, disconnected unconnected, uh, uh, not connected, uh, uh, unconnected. I, don't, I, I was trying to go more, man, but I get it. Not read the source. In a I, while. I have not. Uh, I have not. But uh, yeah, I feel like we're we're just so disconnected with each other that that it's 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 difficult like to hold a conversation and and. The art of conversation is gone. Really, I mean, if you really look at it, people people don't want to talk. People uh, don't have no reason to talk anymore. It's like I'll just shoot me a text. Yeah, I mean, just shoot me a text or whatever type Keenan situation. He does not want to talk. He's over here talking like he's fine with it, but he does not. Uh, no, talk. I mean, I'll be a thousand percent yeah. honest. Like I like I tell people, I'm a text first pastor, and I'm like, listen, if you text me, it, unless somebody's on fire or dying or bleeding, don't don't call me. You know, like text me. Um, and, you, and you call me, I'm going to assume you're a scam caller. Yeah. <laughs> you're and going to voicemail. I'll away. even take it a step further because I, I believe in being real and relatable, and I just believe in being transparent uh, most of the time. And uh, But, I, I, like, I've even gotten to a point now where I'm lazy at texting, mm-hmm. uh, where I will literally do voice text now. I'll hit the little mic, and I'll be like, and I'll just start talking. And uh, if you're if you have been handicapped with the redneck vocabulary like I have and the accent that I have a lot of times, uh, I don't think you can claim that as a handicap. Uh, well, you you go to you go to other parts of the nation and see if it's not a handicap. All right, uh, <laughs> we need to get him one of those little stickers to put in his car. Yeah, absolutely. I need to park up close because I'll talk like this. Yeah, drop me in New York and see what happens. You know, uh, so I talk slow and walk even slower. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I feel like that that we get to this point, man, of where it's like we're we're not being uh, we're not being vulnerable enough with each other but but we're also becoming lazy in conversation and like i said lazy and the fact that i'm just over here just voice texting now because i don't because i don't want to text everything out with my fingers and all that so i'm like hitting this and i'm like ah, da, 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 send, okay and then you know whatever the case is and and it's like we've lost the art of conversation i feel like the art of of people uh in- engaging uh with each other and i, I think a lot of that i, I like to think of it like uh I, and I know you're probably sick and tired of hearing about presidential stuff and campaigns and stuff like that. But like um, one thing I heard, um, I know this is going to be really hard to believe, um, that uh, I think it was Waltz that said this, uh, that we needed to get back to sitting down around the kitchen table and having conversations. And uh, I do agree with that. I must be wrong because he's a Democrat. Uh, he don't, we, don't, we don't even have kitchen tables. Uh, we don't even have enough food to put on the tables. Uh, no, but I do agree with that statement uh, where, you know, when was the last time that that and and I'm guilty? I think we're all guilty. My family is guilty of we don't eat supper at the same time. Even though supper's cooked, we don't eat it at the same time. The kids grab, I come in, I take a shower. Like you know, everybody's doing their thing. I'm eating by myself. They're eating by themselves. You know, it's like when is the last time that that the family sat down together, had a meal, had a conversation? The electronics went out the door, and it's like you you almost it's it's like you almost feel weird. Mm-hmm. You uh, you feel like you're like in this out of body experience mm-hmm. where you're just like, what do I do with my hands? I, you know, it's I'm, like <laughs> I married my wife not to look at her. Yeah, but the- <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like why did I get? Oh my god, I gotta talk to him. You know, and 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 I, we we've just we've allowed that to creep mm-hmm. into a lot of different areas. Of course, the church is one of them. Yeah, and it's it is tough, you know, because I mean it is I think a lot easier for us to turn our brain off. Um, you know, and I find myself, you know, guilty of it, and I know Keenan does as well. I don't know about David. How don't much speak, for, his, don't speak for me. For don't speak for me. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, just where you're, you're guilty of, you know, you'll be having a conversation with someone while on your phone. Um, or you'll, you know, you'll be sitting there, you know, every five, like, I, I will find myself, like, I'll be playing video games, and in between matches, I'll pull my phone out waiting for the next one, just sit there, scroll. Like, I can't sit there in silence by myself watching the screen. I do that. Uh, with, uh, <laughs> did I tell you I was watching Suits? Suits, yeah. Uh, yeah we, we heard that Keenan has apparently been watching Suits. Uh, he yeah. won't let us forget it. I know. I've told everybody. Uh, but I do the same thing. Whenever, Commercial break? Yeah, whenever the, the, the minute ads or minute and a half ads come on um, on Peacock, man, I'm like, uh, I, I just pull out my phone. And I'm mm-hmm. like, minute and a half. I'm like, okay, what can I do? 
what can you do in 90 seconds? Yeah, I can scroll Facebook in 90 seconds. In 90 seconds. Yeah. And that's what you do. And I you can literally close it out. on my Facebook when I'm yep. kidding. <laughs> but yeah. I, I can do that real quick. You go back to it yeah. watching the show, bro. Exactly. And it's, it's pretty crazy. I, it's like, and we've talked about this before, about how sometimes we're just so uncomfortable with silence. Uh, you know, our lives have become so busy, so populated with noise and information, and our brains are so used to being constantly stimulated that we can't handle not being stimulated. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we have to, even in those moments of silence or, you know, in those conversations we don't want to be having or those conversations we do want to be having, we're having to constantly distract ourselves and, and give ourselves that, that dopamine rush that our brains has to be clicking nonstop or else we just feel useless. Um, and it, it's, it's sad. It really is. Like, I hate it. Like, I, yeah. I, I do. I honestly, I hate it. I hate that my first reaction, as soon as a commercial comes on or as soon as pick I'm waiting for a match, immediately pick that pick phone up, phone. looking at stuff. I probably, you know, I, I don't need to be on social media right now. I like, I set I time limits. I, know, I tell you, you daily. I tell you daily that I, I don't do. need to be on social media. I even set time limits and my wife gets mad at me because I set time limits on my apps to make sure I don't spend a lot of time on them anymore. That's awesome. Why yeah. does she get mad at you? Because I ignore it. Uh, I just oh, you ignore, ignore the time limit. Yeah, oh, I ignore okay. the time All limit, right. and I just keep scrolling. And she's like, "Why do you set that for if you're not even going to follow it?" Uh, but it, it's just like that—that that brain. You know, we, you know, maybe you had a long day, and you're just sitting there trying to, you know, let your brain be stimulated because you're just worn out, and you're trying to do those easy, you know, mindless tasks. Um, it, it is, it is difficult because you know we we sit there and you know we, we have people, and I think one one of the saddest versions of that, you know, we talk, you see the memes and stuff on Facebook of. You know, you have that little kid sitting there on their phone having lunch with their grandpa. Yes. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. gets everybody like, oh, because like that kid is sitting there like, you don't, you, you don't, don't know, know how time. much time you have you right now. You're going to regret yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's the same thing with, you know, your, your wife and your kids. You know, and I, I've been guilty. You know, I've tried to catch myself of that. My wife and I had talked about it before, you know, how many times that like, you know, we'd be playing with like my son, for example, he's one and a half. And, you know, we're, instead of playing with him, we'll both be sitting on the couch on our phones while he's running around, you know, kicking a ball or something along mm -hmm. those lines. And, you know, it really makes you feel a little guilty. You're like, well, what are you doing? You know, if you really ever just stop and think, you know, what are you doing? Like, you're missing memories. You're missing playing with your kids. You know, your kids should be more important than, you know, whatever you're watching on TV or whatever you're doing on your phone or, yeah. you know, all these sorts of different things. And, you know, we, we just live in such a, a culture where we have to be constantly distracted. We have to be constantly, like, our mind has to be constantly stimulated or else we're just going to go crazy. Um, it, it is sad, you know, and like I said, I know it's something that I, I struggle with. If anybody watching wants to pray for me, that I get some help with that. Um, and I, I'm sure I'll speak I've for tried. the other two. You know, it, it is hard. You do not speak for me. I do. It's too late. I've done, I have already spoken for you. you. <laughs> speak for me. You don't do it, man. Uh, you don't do it. So what, what do you think? What do you think, David? What do you think one thing is, man? Because we can, like, how Nick was ending that, I was hearing, basically, I started thinking about it church world-wise. Uh, I'm thinking that, you know, he's like, oh, we constantly have to be distracted. We constantly have to be this and that and the other. And, and so I'm thinking like, I'm thinking whenever I come and enter the church um, and we're just as guilty of it as everybody else. I'm not throwing stones at anybody, but, you know, like you think about the distractions in here. You think about the lights. You've got the signs. We've got the stage lights. We've got the, you know, the set lights here. Um, you know, we got the loud music. We got this and that and the other going donuts, on. And it's coffee. like donuts, coffee, like, yeah, this atmosphere. And it's like, it, 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 that that is not... Uh, it, it, it's good add-ons, it's good additions, but do 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 they become distractions sometimes? Like, does it keep, or, or do they allow people to to hide, you feel like, uh, maybe their true self or what they're going through, uh, so that way they don't have to come to the forefront with it? Yeah, I, I feel like it can be like a big distraction. Like, if there's something on the screen, like, I have that screen time set, mm -hmm. and so, like, it's very easy. Like, you just click on it, and then, like, I can open it up and it'd be like open the rest of the time. So it's like, it's almost pointless. Of <laughs> it's like an accountability thing. Yeah. 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 But like church wise though, man, like, like it, for you, what, what do you, what do you, or coming do from you, a mega church. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, do you, what do you get distracted by or, or is there anything? Are you just super Christian, man? Oh no, just super Christian. Hey, yeah. I see like, we found one, coming. ladies and gentlemen. We found one. Coming, bro. <laughs> if you don't look like this man right here, then you ain't. <laughs> Absolutely, you ain't going in. Absolutely. No, I'd say the the screen because like you know our our pastor is like kind of out there in front of the screen, and so yeah. like I I play video games a lot, and so the screen is very distracting for me. I'm right. constantly like looking at it, and I'd say the screen can be at times can be distracting. Like I'm like 
So, like, if something is playing or doing something, like, on the screen behind him, like, you're more focused on him, or, I mean, on the screen versus what he's trying to say or do along Yeah, the way. we have, like, a collage of pictures that's up there. Yeah. And taking, uh, like, I'll be looking at, like, the pictures and sort of, like, concentrating on what he's saying. That's an, that, I mean, that is an interesting perspective because, like, you know, for people, um, and, and, you know, for me being on the other end, I'm on the stage, so I'm looking at everybody out here, and, I mean, everybody's ADHD. I don't care what you say because, like, I watch people out here on the daily, uh, and it, you could have a flea up here jumping on the piano, and people are like, what is that? You know, like, type situation. And so we are, I, that's, I guess that was the point I was trying to make. Like, no matter how big your church is or no matter how small your church is, like, people are easily distracted. And, and because suck. Yeah, they do absolutely it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so finger pointing is yeah. your fault you're yeah. horrible uh and that's the reason why people can't be real because they're like oh man we suck so whatever you know uh, everybody sucks you might as well be real this is true i yeah. mean that, i think that's a good i think that's a good mindset to have um but but i do think that like that people i think that distraction is a thing but i also think that people do use that as an excuse sometimes um that it's like you know i can kind of fade away so like you know, I, people people sometimes I think feel more comfortable in a bigger style church uh, because it's like it's easy to get lost in the sauce, man. It's easy to get lost in the mix, and 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 you may not have that true genuine connection that that some people want and desire uh, along the way, and and so you know that might be an issue, um, but. You know, no matter if you're sitting in a in a three thousand person church, or you're sitting in a three hundred person church, or you're sitting in a thirty person church, it, it it's not going to matter the size of the church if you're not willing to be real while you're there. You know, and and, and that's the main thing that that I'm trying to get people to understand. Like through the scripture today, uh, was was Second Corinthians four. Uh, it was like five through nine, and then like uh, eighteen through twenty, I think. Uh, but it, you know, we were talking a lot, or no, it was sixteen through eighteen. I apologize. Uh, but we were talking a lot about how Paul was writing this, saying that that we're going to have trouble on the outside of life, but it's what we have stored in us on the inside that makes the difference. And I was kind of likening likening it. There we go. Uh, to I know, man, I caught myself. Uh, to a crash test. Like if you ever watched vehicle crash tests, uh, I'm intrigued by those because mm -hmm. I, I watch all these different makes and types of vehicles. They, they park them, they put them close to a, uh, to a wall and then they like shoot this like vehicle towards them, this Mack truck or whatever, coming at like a certain set rate of speed and they test out, you know, how, how safe they are basically. And people pay thousands of dollars for these vehicles that aren't safe. I mean, like as soon as pressure hits, it pushes them into the wall and it just crumples them into nothing. And the reason why they crumple for is because they have no inside structure to keep them safe. You know, it's it's like we have sacrificed safety for whatever, you know, for, for speed, for, for speed economy. Appearance. Yeah, like a, a lot of different things. And what I was trying to get people to understand from that is, is that it does you no good to be a fake Christian. It does you no good to be a, 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 a quote-unquote put-together Christian on the outside because you're going to face pressure at some point in time in your life. And, and if we let pressure always like you know push on us, then we're going to be crumpled. We're going to fold every single time. But if you go back and read that scripture that Paul was writing, you know, he said, hey, man, we're, we're, you know, we're hard-pressed, but we're not crumbling. And you know, we're perplexed, but we're not, you know, we're not throwing in the towel. And like all of these different things, man, um, and, and so Paul was really trying to say, it's like, what is on the inside of you is what makes the most difference. What, what is on the inside of you separates you and sets you apart. But for us to realize what's on the inside of us, man, we have to understand that we have struggles on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. And, and for us to just come in and be like, it, what's crazy to me is that it blows our mind when quote unquote Christian people struggle or fall short. It blows our minds. So I'm a huge, huge fan of Carl Lentz. I've said that from the beginning. I, I love the guy to death. I, I love the way that he preached at Hillsong. I love the passion. I love the determination. I love everything about it. And the man had a lot of narcissistic values, cheated on his wife multiple times, um, and everything else that went along the way. All right? Now, from that moment, it's been four years. I was telling Dave about this this morning. I said, it's been four years, Dave, since since all of this happened. And I said, there are still people in the church today that make the comments, not in, I, I mean, like just in the church realm in general, that make the comments. 
well, you could never go back to preaching or you can never be in ministry or you can never do this and you can never do that. And I'm like, if that's the case... Thanks, First Timothy. <laughs> right? Well, I mean, like, if that's the case, man, if we are not redeemable to what we used to be, what is the point of God's grace, number one? Number two, if we are not redeemable to what we used to be, then why would we ever come forth with anything we struggle with to begin with? Like, we're setting this, we're setting this, as I said in service, this unattainable goal to people because we don't want to we don't want to put our laundry in the streets. Mm -hmm. We are putting this unobtainable goal to people who actually do or may want to be vulnerable and say, "Yeah, I do need help. I I do need some prayer. I I do need this." But we look at it from the other side and go, "Ah, well, you know, if you do expose this, like you can never do this again." What? What? Where does it say that in the Bible? Where does it say that I am not redeemable by the blood of Jesus Christ? Where does it say that he cannot restore, renew, refresh? Where does it say that at? Mm -hmm. You know? And I think it even goes back. We, we talked about this a few weeks ago um, with, with Paul and like kind of how he's portrayed after um, his salvation experience. And you know, we talked about how you know, Paul is always, you know, a harsh critic of, you know, the church and of Christians and of, you know, this, that, and the other. And, you know, gives an outline for how, you know, church leaders should be, how they should behave and what they should look like, where they should come from. And we don't ever see what exactly it was that Paul himself struggled with. You know, we look at Paul as this like perfect, almost unobtainable mm -hmm. version of a Christian yeah. because, you know, he says he struggled, he says he fought, but he's never very specific and vulnerable about what it was that he struggled with. You know, of course, we know he was in prison. We know he, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we, we talk about that, that thorn in his side. He talks about, you know, how he struggles constantly with his flesh. Um, you know, we don't hear any specifics or read any specifics about what he dealt with. So in our heads as Christians, I, I can understand how we look at that and say, you know, this is how we're supposed to be. If we fall short from this, we are no longer worthy of calling ourselves a church leader or a Christian or this type of this or, you know, whatever else. And it, it does, as you said, kind of go against, you know, what the Bible preaches about Jesus grace, mercy and forgiveness. Right. Because it's like, you know, it, it says in the Bible, you know, that, you know, church leader has to be this type of person. You never had a divorce, never, you know, whatever, you know, whatever else. I can't read the exact thing yeah. off my head, but. You know, you, you have to fit this exact bill, uh, you know, this exa exact description in order to be a an elder or a deacon or a leader or whatever else. And so we're like, if we ever fail from that or fall from that, then according to those standards, we can't be a leader anymore. And I, I think that's kind of where we, we've, a lot of churches have built that mindset up of, uh, you know, it's like, hey, if they do this, be like this, do this, then they can't be that. Mm -hmm. So are you ready for this? Go ahead. You ready for the devil's advocate now? Mm -hmm. So at what point in time, like we're so if 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 we if we take that moment right there and we say if you have done this, been there, because I, I was a part of that. Like mm -hmm. I literally, I was twenty twenty one twenty twenty one or twenty two. Uh, whenever I was nominated to be a now, of course I know a lot about life at twenty two, um, mm -hmm. but uh, but I was nominated to be a church elder in in a previous church at twenty two years old, and and the pastor. Uh, did not uh, vote uh, for me to become one because of I could not fulfill all of the obligations mm -hmm. that you, you just listed. Yet. I weren't married. I, I weren't married. married. <laughs> I weren't married. <laughs> I weren't married. Yet. Yet. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly why he did not let me in. Uh, mm -hmm. He's you like, like you know, I, talk, I told you, man, yeah. put me on the streets of New York, and they, they they'll be like, this guy, there's something wrong with him. Um, now that's why he's got the blue tag. I, I get it yeah, now. Exactly. Uh, so you know, but. If I would have allowed that to, because you got to be careful with that, because if if I would have allowed that to shape my life or to shape my my perception of Jesus, then I might have would have thought that, hey, look, like I, I'll, never I, I, I'll never be good enough. I I will never reach that. You know. Also, I, wait a minute. I have to be married before I serve. But Paul says not to get married. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, so I, if you can stay single, stay single. Stay but if single. You can't control yourself. Yeah, but if you're going to burn with lust, get married. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then it's like, well, wait a minute. So, so, uh, my, I guess my devil's advocate is like it's almost a little bit of contradictory for each mm -hmm. other. I feel like it's like, hey, one minute, hey, to be a leader, you need to get married. But wait a minute, hey, he says, and this is a dude that wrote two thirds of the New Testament, by the way. Mm -hmm. He says, don't get married. He if started you can. churches. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, he planted <laughs> churches, bro. So it's like, you know, you go to the back and forth with that. Um, and and so I, I think that's why, like. Um, I, I truly think that that's why people do struggle with being real sometimes. It's because we as churches, we, we find things in the Bible that we are literally like we will not budge on. Like we will not, we, we won't even have a conversation about it, you know. And, but at the other end of the, at the, the other end of the spectrum, 
it's like, oh, but God is a God of love, mercy, and grace. He sent His Son, Jesus. He'll forgive you for any sin. You just can't lead, okay? <laughs> like, you know, you just can't lead. And it's like, so at, at that moment in time, it's like, if, if, if what I've done in my past is going to keep me from serving in the future, then why should I reveal what I'm going through? And I think you got, uh, David, I think you got a good testimony because I, I'm just going to put your business out there in the hey, street. Hey, that's okay, um, man. David was in jail for 27 years. Uh, no, 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 False prophet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but David, you, you were an alcoholic, right? Is that true? Yeah, no? I, okay. I was like a. You, or was you an alcoholic? Was you a drug addict or what? Or what? No, I, I was like a, uh, I was just like a friendly drinker like a if all my drinker. if my if he wouldn't hey, that's what i would call it. Yeah, that's, what, that's what i am no uh, if uh if all my friends like to drink then i'd like to drink. right right i got you man i got you i, but, I, I but, wanted to fit in with the crowd you know right like, but here's the deal i want to ask you a question i want you to be truthful with me because if not right. we're shutting this down right now and right. uh we're starting over we're gonna kick you out and we're gonna start over uh no, okay. so, <laughs> please don't <You're> right. <laughs> please be honest david but but let me ask you a question if if somebody came to you and said David, you I want you to be a leader in this church, but you gotta be honest with me. Have you ever drank alcohol in your life? I would be a hundred percent. You'd be honest with them. Yeah. If that if that cost you your if that cost you leadership. Yeah. See, now now not everybody's gonna have that response though. You're super Christian. You know what I'm saying? He so, only listens to worship. Music. Yeah, exactly. So That's he's right. he's gonna have that response. You know, he's gonna be like, Yeah, man, I did, you know. Um but but I, I guess maybe it's just I, I think it's setting again that unfair expectation because because if people come to you and say hey look like this is the this is the guidelines bam 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 and we're not budging off these you know but hey God can forgive any sin out there right mm-hmm. I mean He sent His Son Jesus we got all that good stuff but mm, there's only special people that can be in leadership now I do agree with that to a certain point not everybody's called to be a leader I, I, I a thousand percent agree with that but. I, I don't think we disqualify people simply because of point A, point B, point C, point D. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I, just because they don't live up to a certain quote unquote expectation, because there's nobody that is sitting at this table watching this that will hear this or in this world that personifies perfection. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not there. So we've all fallen short. It's what the Bible says of the glory of God. We all have. And, and so what I, I feel like maybe the question becomes what uh determines or dictates us uh putting standards on a certain person or a situation that might even entrap them even more to stay stuck in their sin you know i'm gonna i'm gonna, play, I'm gonna throw something really controversial at you all right are you ready you don't so, want me to answer I, no i do want you to answer. okay because uh, we're well, about to lose some people oh. absolutely oh let me get my hands, hands, warmed, up. hands warmed up go ahead bro. Uh, what's the difference between a fat pastor and a gay pastor <laughs> if we're gonna look at that you know it's like you know sin you know sin of gluttony sin you know all those sorts of things of sin is a sin you know all those sorts of things you know it, 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 you really start to really put like going off of what you're talking about because you know because 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 because, 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 because there is a and I, if i'm lying i'm dying there is a very short marginal amount of people in the church realm that struggles with homosexuality. There is, and they won't come forth with it, mm-hmm. but there is. There's people that do struggle with it. But here's the deal with it. It's not an overwhelming majority of people, mm-hmm. and so you don't hear about it. But, but, now, you're starting to see it, you're starting to see it come out, like, and, and this is just, we're probably going to get canceled. <laughs> you're um, starting to see it literally you come start, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, this, like, like, no joke. Like, you're starting to see it now where, like, Pastors are falling by the wayside because they've had inappropriate relationships with younger people. I can't go like into into full detail, but you know, with younger people within the churches, and so and so now it's like you know we we are. Um, I, I think that's where we have this again. Like you can't be too proud. You can't be on your high horse. You can't be up here telling people that they have to you know, like dot A to dot C, but but yet we have pastors out here falling by the wayside because they had inappropriate relations with people that were minors. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, and the reason why I feel like that, that yeah, like what's the difference? There is no difference. It is sin in God's eyes. And and all sin is the same in God's eyes, except for the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Like, we've, like that's what the Bible says. And so it's all sin, but the reason why you don't want to hear about it is because we have associated, and I, I've talked about this a lot, we have associated being fat, being overweight, or whatever you want to call it, with being happy. Mm-hmm. We have. 
if people, if you look at a relationship with somebody and you see them 10 years in, and you know, it's it's that always that that honeymoon, people get comfortable, they start eating, da da da. You love me, I've changed my pants to sweatpants, you know, all that good stuff, like all that, like you, you know me, you love me, whatever. And and so you're stuck with me. yeah, you're stuck <laughs> right, right. That's the mentality. And and so when people see you out on the streets and they see you now like 10, 15 pounds over, it's not they look at you and go, Oh my God, what happened? You know, it's not a train wreck. It's like Oh, look at them. They're so happy. They're in love. They're, oh my gosh, like you look great, you know, type situation. And it's like, oh, why? Because I, because now I feel comfortable enough just to let myself go. Is that what, the, is that, is that what's going on? And, and so we, we associate that or we associate this, this big, bolsterous pe- uh, preacher on a Sunday morning with a big gut and that filled deep voice. It's filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's like, no, it's McDonald's, but you know, he's filled with something, you know, uh, but, but, but we, but we associate even that with God's blessings. God's been so good to me that he loaded my table up with nothing but food. You know what I'm saying? And I it's like, and it's like weekend. no, you actually, and I'm going to call people, but like call people out, but it's like, no, you actually don't have the discipline to say no. You don't have the self-control to say no and to back yourself away. And I know as I'm saying that, I'm eating three cream-filled <laughs> chocolate-covered donuts. He talked about eating four plus, and, a, moon plus a moon pie. You know, but the reason why I'm able to do that is because I work my – if you weren't here, I work my <laughs> tail off Monday through Saturday in, in order to be able to to eat, you know, a little bit of something on a Sunday afternoon to enjoy something like that. Like I am disciplined Monday through Saturday with what I eat, what I do, how I work out, the stuff I drink, what I put in my body, the vitamins and everything else. Like I am disciplined with that. And so therefore, there's a huge difference. Now, I'm not going to come at somebody with the stuff that I don't struggle with and come at them like it's the worst thing in the world because that is the problem we have today in the church, I feel like, that the preachers that don't struggle with homosexuality, they will yell it from the top of the rafters. You know, it's a sin, you're going to hell. Same thing with abortion. You know, low-hanging fruit, the stuff that people come at the most if they don't struggle with it. Now, you struggle with adultery, oh, you struggle with lust, you struggle with gossip, you struggle with slander, you struggle with gluttony, you struggle with, you know, things like that. Oh, okay, well, um, you know, well, we're, we're going to pray, uh, <laughs> put it on a card, okay, and uh, we'll pray over the cards uh, about 3 p.m. on Saturday, okay? And, and a lot of people will not preach about that kind of stuff because that is what they struggle with. You know what I'm saying? That is what they struggle with, so they're not going to preach about it. But, hey, all the sin that I don't struggle with, free game, and I'm smacking everybody with mm-hmm. it. And, and that's where I feel like that, again, that we create this space of of not of inclusiveness or not of safety or not of I can be me, uh, I can be vulnerable. But we create this space of, like we talked about today, if you're the first person out of that pew and at this altar, you are vulnerable. Uh, because now everybody that's sitting in these seats are looking at you. Mm-hmm. And and we get so freaked out by that because we don't want people to think that our lives is such a mess that we have to come to this altar and pray about it. And I don't know why. I I, I really don't know why. You know, I, I am a uh, cry first, ask questions later guy. Um, and anybody who watches the service back today, my favorite story in the entire Bible is the prodigal son. Love it to death, man, because it's just such, it, it just reminds me so much about my life. And there's not many times that I can't tell that story uh, that I don't literally just break into tears. And you saw me. Like, I just had to stop, bend over today. It, like, you gave it, somebody it, that uncomfortable silence that nobody likes. Yeah, right. Silence. Yeah, they're like, what is he doing? Is he dying? Is he okay? Is he having a heart attack? Is he about to, <laughs> is he about to poop on himself? What is he doing right now? You did rip your pants. So. I did rip my <laughs> pants today. Uh, yeah, so don't tell my wife because that is her motion to say, you need pants that are bigger, Keenan. Stop wearing tight pants. Uh, but, yeah, so I had to, like, I just, it's, it's, it's this moment, man, where it's, like, it's so vulnerable where this guy's, like, I'm sorry, I'm coming home. And, and the father meets him in the field just running towards him and gives him this hug. Um, and, and like, that is the place where, that is the place that, that I want to create while we are in here, where I don't care who you are, what you are, where you are, what you've done or anything else. Like the same Jesus that crawled upon that cross that literally was crucified, died for you. He died for me. He died for super Christian Dave. 
He died for Nick. He died for those people, man. And it's like, but we we get into these conversations about Dahmer and people like that that are sitting in prison that that uh, that you know Dahmer said, "Hey, man, I'm saved by Jesus," you know. And it's like that's not up to me to decide because Jesus died for Dahmer. You know, it's a good shirt. Uh, uh, yeah, that's Jesus died right. for Dahmer. Yeah, you know, Dahmer. Uh, that that would definitely be a conversation piece. Uh, Absolutely, for the most part. Imagine walking around Walmart with that on. Right? Jesus died for Dahmer. <laughs> people would uh, see Jesus and go, like, "I like your shirt." Wait, 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 like, I don't read anywhere in that scripture where it says it's up to me to determine your relationship or if you have a good one or if you have a factual one or whatever. Like, that's not up to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and But I think we, again, we put the confines on people where people can't be real uh, because as soon as they decide to to be real about something, it's not love, it's not compassion, it's not grace, it's not mercy. It's literally, well, let me take this Bible and slap you in the face with what you just said to me, mm-hmm. you know? And, and I mean, like... If if you, Dave, if you went to a church like that, I mean, how forthcoming would you be about your sin? Like, if you felt like you was just going to get beat up for the things that you've done in your past, like, how long would you stay there? I'd probably leave, like, pretty soon. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, as soon as you got in the in the place, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like, if you felt like that, man. And, and, and so, I mean, um, you know, and... and like speak and you can be you can be truthful you ain't gonna hurt my feelings i'll kill you but you ain't gonna hurt my feelings uh but how did you how did you feel like like walking into walking into this place today 100 percent honesty how did you feel i felt welcome yeah I, and i got a gun under the table <laughs> he's actually hooked up to a yeah, uh yeah to, yeah to electric chair no I'm go ahead i'm in trouble yeah uh no take and i felt welcome everybody was like just even you know i sat in front of your dad and he was like he was the first person to turn around and like bless you know, his like, heart. He turned around. <laughs> bless his heart. Bless his heart. No, he's no for real. He's a good dude. Uh, and and you know I, I know God is real because like that dude that that spun around and talked to you would not have done that five years ago. You know he didn't want to talk to people five years mm-hmm. ago. He he didn't. He literally. So he was coming out from the bathroom and I I stopped him and I shook his hand. I said, "What's up this morning, man?" And he said. You know that guy drove three and a half hours to come up here today? That's the first words out of his mouth. I said, Yeah, man, that's what I seen him. He said, What's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say that. Uh, no, he didn't say Coming that. Coming from the man who drove all the yeah, way he here. Drove, he, drove, he couldn't find a parking spot. Yeah, and he drove, drove back, back home. home. Yeah, for real. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, like, that is the, you know, I'm glad you actually made that example, though, because that that is something where it's like, you can see the freedom even like for him to just turn around and, and, and engage in a conversation and be right. like, yeah, and be like, you know, hey, man, like, you know, five years ago, I, I probably like I, I wouldn't even turn around and looked at you. Well, five years ago, he wouldn't have been in his church, you know. So it's like to, to, to watch God work and move through situations like that and not to write people off, man. I, th- I think that's the biggest thing, too, is not to write people off, uh, you know, with, with, with what they've been through and, and what they've experienced. And, and just because you have a record, it don't mean anything. Just because you've been in and out of prison, it don't mean anything. Just because you've been addicted, it don't mean – like just because you killed somebody, it don't mean – that God can't redeem, man. Like that's that's the biggest thing that that I want people to kind of get. Like I'm not saying you have to come in and brag about your sin or brag about your struggles, but like we said today, we have to understand the difference between uh, presenting our problems to talk about them or presenting our problems to change from them. I think there's a big difference. And if we're going to complain about them, then our heart placement's not right. But if I if I come and I say, Nick, I'm struggling with this, man, or David, I've I've been going through this. You know, it's not that I'm bragging about it. I, I'm literally saying I'm bringing this to the surface because I need help, mm-hmm. you know. And, and if we cut that helpline off to people, man, like, what's the what's the point, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and, we, and that's what we talk a lot about, you know, about the church is oftentimes more of a country club than it is a hospital. Thousands um, percent. You know, we, we come in here, we had there. It's like it's we, there's certain so. expectations. Hey, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> uh, certain expectations, you know, that we, we feel like we have to meet, certain way we have to present ourselves. And I, mean, I was talking to the kids downstairs about, uh, we were reading from Proverbs today, and it talked about how, like, so you know, fools will hide their heavy heart behind laughter, uh, you know, and, and things of that nature. Mm. And it's just like you, you walk into these buildings, you know, you wear a mask, you walk in, you act like everything's fine, you're laughing. You know, everybody always points to like Robin Williams 
uh, about you know how he was just a you know his face just it just it showed and exhumed laughter and joy and he killed himself and people have such a hard time understanding that and you're like well that's because he didn't feel safe talking about what he was dealing with he didn't feel safe and uh, to be vulnerable and there's people who walk into these church buildings on sundays wednesdays saturdays whenever you have service and they they don't feel safe to talk about what they're dealing with or talk about what they're struggling with um you know and it's it, it is it is crazy and it is sad you know and we always talk about uh, you know you, you get what you put into it yeah. you know, people are going to do what they want to do you know yeah. it's up to you it's up to each and every person listening to this watching this in these seats on sundays wednesdays whenever you know, it's up to each and every individual to be vulnerable and to allow other people to be vulnerable, to help other people feel safe, loved, cared about, uh, you know, so that way they feel, you know, that they can disclose what they're talking about, you know, and we, and we, we talk all the time about lukewarm Christians, you know, and we, we talk, you know, we have people in here who've been Christians for 67 years, we have people in churches who've been Christians for, you know, years and years and years and years who still don't feel comfortable, who still, you know, have a hard time, you know, showing the love of Jesus and, you know, all these sorts of things. And I'm, I'm bragging on David for a minute here, you know, because we, we, Keenan and I laugh all the time. But I mean, my God, this man will send us a devotional every single every morning. morning. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I said, this man, he said, well, you've been a Christian, what, two years, right? I, I don't know about Sundays. You said <laughs> yeah, on so Sundays, too? No, no, no it's just Monday, 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 Monday through Saturday. No, yeah. Saturday, too. Yeah. You, yeah, must Saturday not, you must not no, be the good. I don't, I don't know, know if you get ones on Saturday, but <laughs> I do. Yeah, I, I get them. I get them, too. You know, okay. but I mean, uh-huh. the man, you know, been, been a Christian for two years, and he's out here, you know, spreading the love of Jesus to people, you know, and, and it's and it's he's doing things that, you know, again, these people that have been Christians for 37, 48 years won't do. Um, you know, and, and it's just, you know, I, I love seeing that. I love that enthusiasm. I love that passion, you know, and it was, it was awesome to see him walk in these doors. You know, I saw him up there talking to Keenan. I was like, I think it's David up there. Uh, you know, he always said he was going to make a trip up here. You know, he blocked out time at his church where he normally serves so he could come down here, talk to us and, you know, now be on the podcast. Because our church is bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We may not have two. Yeah, but we, we may, may not, not have, have three a, services, yeah, four three churches, churches, and four churches, five, yeah. five partridges and a pear tree. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But, hey, but we, you know, we, we got David this week. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it is all, you know, again, David, you know, is sitting here. First time he's been to this church, how can I help? How can I serve? You know, I mean, uh, this man, I said, you Did know, you I said that today. Yeah, yeah. He walked, he's like, how can I help? Yeah. Anything I can do for you all? And I'm like, you know, God, we need more Davids. <laughs> he didn't ask me, bro. I mean, he didn't, I, ask, me, he didn't ask me. I'm just saying. Uh, if he asked me, it's fine. I'll, I'll give him. I'll give him credit for it. Okay. Uh, but again, you know, we we have we have to have more people willing and able to to serve, to give, to love. You know, because when we have more people like that, you know, we're gonna have more people willing to be vulnerable. Um, I know David. He's involved in like celebrate recovery and things like that yeah. down in his church, and you know, where yeah. he's talking and helping and praying for addicts and giving his testimony about things he struggled with and been through and helping other people through that as well. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, it's, it's crazy. I was better keen and not to talk, but I mean, like we, we, we want more people who have a heart like David has, you know, who's willing to serve and give and, and, you know, travel three and a half hours just to, you know, come up here and be a part of service. And after driving three and a half hours, he's willing to help out and serve here people he's never even met before, mm-hmm. uh, aside from watching them on our podcast or listening to them. Uh, and so, you know, we, we, we love and appreciate it. And I, I think it's awesome that, you know, he's able to come do that. You know, we want more of that. You know, it, it, we, we have to, you know, be as Christians, you know, we have to be more willing, be more, you know, uh, courageous. You know, David was like, I had to step out of my comfort zone. My relationship with God has allowed me to step out of my comfort zone to get on this podcast and to talk about him and talk about what he's done. Um, and so, you know, I wanted to give him a shout out for that, you know, because he listens every week. He shares every week. You know, he talks to us every week uh, about all kinds of different stuff. And so we're, we're thankful for him. Um, you know, we always pray he's wanting to come out on his own, start his own mowing business. You know, we've been praying for him for that, you know, really hoping that he'll do great, amazing things with that. Um, and everybody listening and watching, I encourage you to pray for that as well, because, again, you know, he's poured out a lot of himself. And so we can do our best to pour into him as well. Um, and but again, you know, there's we, we want stuff like that to happen more in our churches. You know, we want people to be more willing to walk in, to step out, um, you know, to pray for other people, to serve other people. Um, you know, we, we had a guy who, who's just started coming to our church not too long ago. You know, he, he came off the, I'll be 100% honest with you, homeless. He came yeah. into the church homeless, and he yeah. has been vacuuming. He's been stripping boxes down. He's been throwing trash away. Literally stripping. He, yeah, literally <laughs> ripping it in pieces and throwing it away. <laughs> but God bless the man. You know I mean? Yeah. He's coming in here, and he's serving, and he's doing stuff that, you know, people who've been coming here for months and years aren't willing to do. Uh, and, and, I mean, it, it's, you know, not to me, not to call people out, but I'm calling people out. Um, you know, and, and it's just encouraging to see, you know, people in places and situations like that, um, you know, because it is an encouragement. You know, it's nice to see, you know, it's nice to, to, to see something different, to see some good positive momentum and change in people. Yeah. Um, shout, shout out yep. to Adam. Yeah, Adam, sure. Adam. <laughs> uh, Adam. Uh, yeah, shout out to Adam. To Adam. Um, you know, and, 
And I'll be honest with you. I said there may be people who know things about him that would have shut him off, cut him out, oh, and wouldn't yeah, you? Know, and I mean, like, and I mean, we like so we know things. You know, it's just it's it's we we have to be more willing to give people second, third, fourth chances. You know, I think I heard it once. It might have been Keenan who said this. I don't know. I don't give him credit too much. But, I was gonna say I never uh, get credit. Yeah, he never for gets crap credit I a say, lot. Man. But you know, it's Gosh. like if, you know, if God has given, if God has shown me grace, mercy, and forgiveness a thousand times, I should be willing to show it seventy thousand times to everybody else. You know, like, I, didn't I should say be, that. I know. I it wasn't exactly that. that. I kind of paraphrase a little bit. Okay. But, uh, it just you know if, if God has given me X amount of chances, I should be willing to give yeah. other people even yeah. more chances. You know, yeah. and we, we have to be more willing and able to do that. You know, and it, we we talk and joke a lot about different things on the pod, but you know ultimately you know we we trying we're trying to encourage you know the everyday Christian. We're trying to encourage the everyday human being to be better, to do better, to mm. stop sucking, for lack of a better word. Uh, but you know because th- there are people out there who 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 could be doing better and should be doing better. Um, but they're allowing diff- different things to get in the way of that. How do you? How, what do you? What do you do in Celebrate Recovery, Dave? Like, what exactly do you do? Uh, well, we have. Uh, I help from either, uh, like standing at the door, like greeting people, uh-huh, like yeah. you know, like I feel like this is a big thing, like you know, with greeting, like I feel like in five seconds a person's going to decide whether they're going to come back or not. You Ooh, know, man, you know, if that's, tough. that's a good one though. I uh, like it. You do better, Julie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, shout out to our greeter back yeah. there. Uh, yeah, but go ahead, man. No, I mean you're greeting and and, and uh, I do the offering. Yeah, uh, me and another guy we do that, and then uh, I'm actually a leader in a small group. And I, I, I actually, if I had to choose out of all of them, I actually like small group a lot because yeah. it's like you know it's just it's very humbling, and you know I tell a lot of people like man, if you could just get an ounce of how much God loves you, it will change your world. Yeah, oh, a thousand percent, man, a thousand percent. And, uh, and yeah, I, I do like that. It's like, you know, about the five second deal, like people, like as soon as they walk in, um, I had, uh, I had a guy tell me one time that, uh, that it starts in the parking lot and, uh, and I, I've never forgotten that, that, that it starts in the parking lot, that if, that if people pull in and, and they like, they should feel something, you know, like it, it should be like a, almost a, 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 an electricity, uh, in, in the air, you know, whenever they pull into your parking lot. And, uh, and I mean, let's be honest, like if you walk in and you're not greeted by a smiling face saying, Hey, how are you doing this morning? Like, you know, I mean, it's, again, this is like, why, why would you want to be there? I mean, I could go to Walmart and get the same treatment. I get a better greeting at Walmart. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they'll take my cart for me and everything absolutely. sometimes, you know. Yeah. Sometimes they'll ask if I'm stealing something. Yeah. Keep checking my receipt all the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine, man. So, you know, but. That that in that in large part uh, again it, I, I I get it is the experience I get things like that man but it's like again if if people do not feel welcomed if they don't feel if they don't feel like it's a natural environment type thing and and it's like where where it's like man I I feel like I've known these people for a thousand years like you know I've, this is my first time here but I, I feel like I've known them for a long time and if you if you can't create that atmosphere if you can't break down that wall then then it's going to be so difficult for people to be able to be real you know it's going to be it's going to be difficult for people to be able to just come to the forefront and say hey man like I, i've been going through some stuff or i've been struggling with this that or the other and you know and so on and so forth so i mean you know but like i said i i, I don't whenever i read my scriptures and 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 you know, I'm praying and stuff, man. I just don't find any spot where where God is like, "Hey, man, like this is this is irredeemable." Sorry, you know, like sorry about your luck, man. You know, I mean, if if you can go back and uh, you know, if you can go back and look at all the people, man, that he that he chose, that he used, that he that he blessed, that he promoted, and and, and so on and so forth, it's just like these are same common, normal, everyday people that literally had some sin in their life, but God was like, hey, I'm going to use you. You know, I'm going to do something with you. And I mean, you know, we can go down the list and talk about people and, and, and all that good stuff. But, you know, I, I just, I think the blanket statement for people that I want them to hear is the fact of that, you know, none of us are perfect. We're not going to be perfect. And and the sin, even though the world puts levels on sin, God does not. Mm-hmm. And um, and, and, and we put more priority on some sins than other sins and whatever the case is and things like that. And, you know, and it's like, um, I'm not saying everything should be excusable. I'm not saying you should turn a blind eye. I'm not saying you should just let people run rampant. Uh, but, but what I am saying is, is that, you know, is that we all deserve the same grace and we all deserve the same mercy and we all deserve the same forgiveness. 
And no matter if you've been a drunk or an adulterer or, you know, no matter whatever area of life you've been into that, that you feel ashamed of in your life, um, you know, coming home and, and, and knowing Jesus, man, there's, there's no greater feeling. There's no greater moment. Um, and, and you don't have to live in that shame after, after you know who he is. You, you don't have to live in that shame. It's a, you just get set free from it, you know? And it's like, and, and now it's not a point of, of telling people you're in it, but it's talking about how he brought you through it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and there's, there's no longer shame in that, you know, there's no longer shame. And I think that flips back to that. Are you telling your problems to, to, to complain or are you telling your problems to change, you know, and, and the heart placement makes a big difference. Yep. Absolutely. Anything else? Wants to say? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was flipping it back over yeah. to you. I mean, I could do this. I could do this all day, you know, like so. America over here. Oh, absolutely, uh -huh. man. Uh, you know, I could do it all day. So, uh, what, what you got Dave before we go? Uh, I'd say, you know, with a, I'd say accountability is really important to me. Yeah. Uh, I know I had a year sober and then I backslid and shame held me like mm -hmm. for a good bit. And I had a friend, you know, being accountable, you know, we, earlier we were talking about her circle. Mm -hmm. He's like, man, like what, what's up? I was like, you know, I'm just like, I, I kind of, you know, went off the rails a little yeah. bit or, you know, I, I backslid and yeah. like, I was like, I just feel like all this heavy shame and guilt. He's like, dude, no. Yeah. Like, yeah, that has no stronghold on you. Right. You know, and we need them kind of people. We need accountability, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also like, you know, you're talking about like being real. I feel like when, when I'm like, if I'm real with somebody else, they're going to be real back with me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the accountability thing is huge. I mean, it, it is definitely huge uh, just to be able to, you know, to have that, that person or a couple people in your life that you can just, again, you can be vulnerable with, you can be real with you know, no matter what the situation is. And you can just bring it to God and you can bring it to them and, and know that they got your back in prayer, um, you know, no matter what the situation is. So, uh, but we, we've enjoyed it, man. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're going to, you know, buy a house up here and uh, and you're just going to start, you know. You're Maybe a start, summer house. Yeah, man. Yeah, you're, house. yeah and you're just going to start. here June, July, and August. <laughs> yeah, you're just going to start serving. Uh, and uh, yeah, you'll be here, man, uh, you know, yeah, for, from here on out. So we appreciate uh, Love and Truth uh, setting you free. <laughs> and uh you know let you come up here but no nah, man like i said we uh we do appreciate it so much uh we'll definitely be in prayer for you for your business venture um that you're thinking about starting and uh be in prayer for the church as well man so uh we love you guys so much as we always say inside of these episodes we hope that something's been said or done that uh, can hopefully change a life maybe change a uh um, change an outlook on something uh shout out man we didn't do this but shout out to was it oregon and hawaii uh, something like that. I can't even remember now. I'd have to get my list out. But I know, we, we I know added it was Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, I know Hawaii it was Hawaii was for sure. I don't know if it was Oregon I mean, or not. I want to say it was West Virginia was one of them. West Virginia. Yeah, West maybe. Virginia. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're 41 states now. Yeah. Uh, 41, I believe. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah. We're, we're getting there. For so real. Yeah. Um, Shout out. If anybody man. wants us to come preach in Hawaii, please let us know. <laughs> uh, I, I feel, as soon as you said that, I was like, man, I feel the Lord, the Lord is telling me that there are a bunch of lost people in Hawaii. Uh, get rid of need, those uh, no, 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 we're, we're those gonna, islander gods yeah, <laughs> absolutely them. man absolutely so we'll be there so if you need us hey hawaii we're there for sure so uh but we love you so much we thank you so much and until we see you again be blessed